Welcome to Evoke Creativity with me, Tammy Collins. Here's a look at what we're going to do today. These are DIY concertina journals that I'm making as stocking stuffers. So I like to upcycle and recycle whenever I can and I use the back of paper tablets. They have a really thick, nice, almost like a chipboard quality uh, cardboard backing. So I collect those. I go through lots of paper. So I collect those and I use these and recycle them uh, for this type of project. Um, so I could use my paper cutter, but believe it or not, this cardboard is really, really thick and my paper cutter is a bit uh, on its downside. It doesn't work quite so well on thicker materials. So I'm cutting it by hand. Um, you can certainly use a paper cutter. If you are going to cut it by hand, just be careful. It's, you know, it, use with caution and discretion and, and make sure you're, you're fully aware of what you're using with a sharp knife. So I'm making these books about four, a uh, little over four by six. Um, it's basically a tablet, um, nine by 12 paper that I'm, you, you know, cutting that down and you, using that size, if you will. So I would cut them in half and then fold them in half. And that's how I'm going to get the size. And these chipboard pieces, I cut slightly larger so that there is a nice little frame and border around the paper so that they, they wear well and fold nicely. And so uh, I'm using this, this is actually a Martha Stewart scoring board, which I love. But if you notice up in the corner there, I was pointing to the zero and the point mark. There's a slight gap there and it can really affect your fold. You notice how I'm moving the paper over to the left and it really changes the dimension. So you have to make a decision on this piece of paper and in this process where you're putting the paper and then do that consistently with each piece of paper. So meaning that if you're going to rest it up against the left side at what the marker says is zero, then you need to do that every single time. Uh, I chose to, to rest it on actually the right side, the number 12. And I'm just going to follow that every single time so that all my folds are consistent with the paper since it's all the same size paper. And I'm just going to take all the paper. I used a variety of pieces of paper here, um, different. They're all about the same weight. They're all around 100 pounds. Some are 98, some are 100, some are 103, but they're all about the same. And there are different types of paper. So uh, some are for, uh, you know, marker or mis mixed media, and it's a smooth texture. And some are colored and some are um, more for a pastel uh, or, you know, charcoal type medium. Uh, some are for watercolor. So it's a variety of paper. It just makes for an interesting journal. I'm making these as gifts. They'll go in uh, in the stockings uh, as a just a nice little handmade. It makes it feel really special. Um, and I really enjoy doing this. This is just something that I find very therapeutic. And uh, it's also a great way to explore your creativity without really um, having to be super talented at anything, right? You, you can, this is just about cutting and folding and gluing paper. I also love to give journals because I think that it, it can ignite the creativity in someone else. And so therefore it's evoking creativity, which is why I'm classifying this sort of under that playlist of things that evoke creativity uh, in particular. Um, I'm trying to do that. That's a big part of my mission and my, and my goal uh, in particular with this channel. And so I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm, I'm actually making two at the same time, two journals at the same time. So I'm going to prep all this paper and I'm just kind of showing you and repeating and, you know, um, prepping it. I'm sorting it, folding it, cutting it. And so now I have all those pieces cut, it, cut to the right size. And now I'm going to assemble them um, 
for the accordion or the concertina effect. Some people call it an accordion style. Uh, you can actually make this notebook from one large sheet of paper and then it's just about the way you cut and fold the paper that you wouldn't have to use tape to tape it together. I actually like this process of doing this. I find it really extends your paper. Um, so you can get a pad of paper. Of course, you know, stores run them on sale and all that great stuff. You can pick them up all over the place. And, um, you know, one tablet of paper has will make over four of these little journals when combined with some other paper. And you can really go to town with this. You can use lots of um, thrifted, you could use book pages, you could use music sheets, you could use all kinds of great stuff uh, for this. You can even use large pieces of paper and um, do mark making and color washing and all kinds of things on them and then use those pages in here. It just depends on who the gift is for and what you uh, hope to in inspire or uh, ev evoke in that person and their creativity. These happen to be from my boys. I have two boys, who one who likes to um, draw and um, paint. The other one is a, a filmmaker, and he likes to be able to uh, write and um, sort of do storyboards and things of that nature. So the plain paper for them is, is a really great option. I love the size of these for them. It folds, ni folds nicely. It'll be in their stocking stuffer. You know, as I still do stockings, they're, you know, they're in their mid to late 20s. They don't really need a stocking, but that, I like to do that because, you know, at this age, I give them, uh, you know, cash or money or gift cards or things of that nature, and there's no real presence per se. So I like to fill the stocking with unique things, and then it's a gift, and then they still have their cash to get what they'd like. So I'm just going to repeat this process for each one. You'll notice that I'm leaving a very slight um, gap in between the pages and that's because after they are taped I want to be able to fold, I want the pages to fold nicely and that little bit of a gap in there will allow for that to happen beautifully. If I butted them real tight up together, it would make it a little bit challenging to fold it. So that little bit of a gap gives it a really nice fold. You could do this tape a few different ways. You can see I'm sort of cutting it and being really meticulous about it here. You could fold it on one, wrap it over and just fold it down, which would work fine as well. This is just the, the, the the flow that I got into and what I was doing. Um, no really right or wrong reason there. I like to also do these tape sections with washi tape. I'm just out of some good washi tape that would have gone well with this design. And I'm using a, uh, this is actually a cutting board underneath. It's clear and it's actually upside down because the one side is a little bit textured and the other side is smooth. I wanted the smooth side facing up so it's actually upside down. <laughs> and uh, that allows for, you know, the tape, it's okay if it sort of sticks on there for a, a brief second while I situate it or get it, um, organ you know, the way I want it. And, and no, I'm not measuring the tape. Uh, if you notice, I'm just eyeballing it. Um, I guess I'm really good at that. Uh, some people might have a little bit of a challenge. You could go in and mark and really keep it super specific if you wanted. I'm taking the bone, bone folder and just kind of rubbing the tape in and, and cre kind of creasing where it's going to fold. So you can see there I've, I've tape them all and there it is. That is all of the pages for the journal. I'll repeat this process for uh, the second book. And so here you see I've pulled some papers for one of the books. I'm pulling um, scrapbooking paper um, and some more chipboard for the interior. 
So we have a cover piece and then we have interior pieces for, for the front and the back. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to include some ribbon so that you can tie the book closed. And what I am creating is a groove in the inner chipboard. I'm saying chipboard, but these are recycled um, cardboard boxes. And it will allow for the ribbon to sit hidden in there without affecting the paper. So if I didn't do this, obviously I couldn't just put the ribbon in there because then it would crease all the paper. You could just put the one board in there and have the ribbon there, but you're still gonna have a little bit of a, you know, um, it's gonna protrude a little bit and leave creases in the paper. So I'm actually doing a double layer and that's what you're gonna see is that I'm going to cut the pieces so that we'll have one solid piece which will be covered with paper and will be the interior and then two smaller pieces for the ribbon to fit in. And I like to put this on here and I use a, a glue stick to actually move the glue around. And I picked this tip up from somewhere. I have no idea. I really wish I knew who it was that I could credit them for this idea. But this really works so beautifully when you're attaching paper to the board like this. If you just use Elmer's glue, it's going to be ripply, right? The paper is going to absorb the moisture from the glue and it gets wrinkly and, and really kind of sloppy. And, and even with other PVA glues, I've noticed this is quite a problem. So this technique where you use the glue stick with the glue, it seems to eliminate that problem completely. And I really just, I use it all the time. I love it. I don't know why it works. I don't know the specifics of it. I just know that uh, I discovered this tip and it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Now on the inside here, I just used the glue stick. I don't worry so much about adding the Elmer's glue because this will be a hidden element. Now this piece right here that I'm working on now is the interior of the cover. So it will, the, the cover gets covered with paper as well, and then they get sort of sandwiched together. However, before I do that, I'm going to add the ribbon and the additional pieces of cardboard. And I'll show you that here in a second. Oh my goodness, I live in such a glorious location. There's an eagle that's been hanging around here all morning, flying around. He just flew past, the, past my window. Okay, so if you notice there, there is absolutely no rippling in that paper from, the, from having a wet glue. Phenomenal tip, can't recommend that enough. Okay, so I'm going to get this ready again. I'm gonna repeat the same process here. Just gonna smear that glue all around with the glue stick. Now I'm using this, this is kind of like, it's not parchment paper, it's actually a paper designed to be sort of a, a palette that you can throw away. Um, it acts just like parchment paper, but I'm just using it underneath so I don't get glue. I should really be wearing gloves. And um, you know, it's really important when you're doing something like this to really mind your surface and where the glue is getting because it can get all over. So once it gets on your finger, you're gonna get it somewhere else. So uh, I'm, you know, I, I have a paper towel to the side that I keep wiping my fingers on, but that's why I'm using this paper here so that I don't get glue on my glass. Okay. So now we're gonna take the two other pieces. Now they're going to be hidden, so they don't need to be covered. And I'm just gonna kind of mark the center out and uh, accommodate for my ribbon. And then I'm going to hot glue my ribbon in the 
section in between the two pieces. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a, the ribbon has a thickness to it. And by adding the cardboard to the left and the right of the ribbon, I'm creating sort of a smooth shelf for the ribbon to sit in so that it doesn't become a, a you know, like a bump or a protrusion that will then imprint the rest of the journal. And so then I'm going to glue those on there. And so there you have the inside cover with the ribbon on it. I'll repeat that process again. I'll do the same thing. I'm just kind of marking where the center is and then I'm going to glue it on. I'm pushing it down real good. And then I'm going to add these pieces of cardboard again. Now in this case I'm going to use uh, the glue stick but I will also use a tiny bit of hot glue because I really want to get these stuck down in, in a particular position and I don't want them to move while they're drying and the hot glue will allow that to happen. And so it's important if you're going to use the hot glue to get it pressed down quickly because hot glue as it dries, if it's, if it's not smooth, it will create a protrusion and we're trying to eliminate all that. But the reason I use it is important because it keeps the board in place while the glue can dry and ensures adhesion. And I'm using the bone folder to just ensure that it's flat. And uh, so this is a custom made, um, uh, I don't know why I'm going blank at the moment, uh, <laughs> binder, I know that's not the right word, I'm completely lost at the moment, I apologize. But anyway, this is a custom made, um, I don't know why I'm going so blank. Uh, it, it's going to flatten, press, it's a press, thank you. <laughs> It's, it's a press and I'm gonna put these in here and I can do this because of the way that I installed the ribbon with those other boards, right? So they're not going to crease each other because they're flat. Creating that gully, if you will, for the ribbon allows that to happen. You can see there how flat they are. And so this is just gonna, I'm just leaving in there to dry and uh, adhere themselves. And so now I'm adhering the paper to those internal pieces. Now I know what you're going to say, why did, you, why did I take the time to cover that if it looks like the paper covers it anyway? Well, it does, but it really doesn't. If, if you notice, it does have a little bit of an edge there. It, it just adds a nice little finished detail rather than it just being cardboard. So I'm adding some glue here, a little bit of the uh, glue stick with it just to get it smoothed out so I don't wrinkle that paper. And this cardboard here with the ribbon is the same si or very close to the same size as that piece of paper. So I'm just sort of eyeballing it and getting it on there. I've got a few seconds to sort of get it lined up where I want it. Um, and get it sandwiched. Now the thing you need to make sure is here is you don't put too much glue where it's oozing out the side so that when you set this off in a press to dry it it doesn't ooze glue and glue your pages together. So there's a fine line there between being the right amount of glue and too much glue. And it would depend on what kind of glue you're using. You know I'm just using sort of a PVA glue. This is Elmer's glue. Uh, it, it is watered down slightly. And so now you can really see there how that ribbon just sort of fits into that seam. And now I'm going to glue the cover and the back on and I will put Elmer's glue on and then I'm gonna just give it a little bit of 
a hot glue again because I want it to be held in position while the glue dries. And so that's the point of the hot glue. Now I'm realizing I should have did this a little bit differently because now these are a different size. They are slightly bigger and I want a specific overhang. And because I put hot glue on there, that's not gonna be as easy to do. Uh, but I've done this a few times, so it, it, it's okay. But you may not wanna do it that way. You can glue the inside cover, the piece with the ribbon, to the cover first and then glue the journal pages in. That will be much easier because of the sizing if you're just trying to get used to it. And you know, I always recommend just make one for fun first. Just try it out. Because you're always, you're always gonna run into something where you go, oh, well, I should have did that differently this time and next time I'm gonna do that. Just, you know, do it once for fun. Um, and sometimes make two at a time because you're going to make one and it's not going to come out as good as the second one. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. So there it is. I will put these in the press overnight and I'll um, come back and show you what happened the next day when I took them out. I've got some puppy teeth holes in my shirt there. <laughs> this is one of my favorite shirts. It's really cold here today. And this is just one of my favorite all time shirts. And it, it has, when my dog was a puppy, she, she'd grab my sleeve and she put all these little holes there. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. So these will stay in the press overnight so that they can dry and, uh, Will to come back here that and see them when they're done. Okay, so here they are. They're completed. They're basically the same size. They're almost identical in the pages and everything that's inside. And uh, they're just it's coordinating papers, but different. And I started with uh, twelve by twelve cardstock paper. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, let me know if you're if you tried this. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. If there's anything I can give you more direction on or that I'm not clear on, please let me know. It's actually really hard to do these videos. <laughs> I hope that you uh, are inspired to use your creativity. I did create a color swatch palette based on these colors. If you'd like to do a, a creation based on that, that's a gift to you. Just let me know. Be sure to drop a note in the comments and fill out your creativity matters to grab your copy. And there's the color swatch based on this project. And thanks for watching Evoke Creativity. I'll see you next time.